Mr. Toomey, your your th thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate your uh, raising a number of uh, important and thoughtful uh, issues here. And I thank you for holding this hearing today. I wanted to touch briefly on a specific issue. Uh, it's really an important issue that Amtrak and uh, Southeast Pennsylvania's commuter rail service, SEPTA, are dealing with, and that's the implementation of positive train control. Uh, PTC, as you know, was first mandated in 2008, and SEPTA, along with Amtrak, other commuter rail systems, and some freight line operators have until 2015 to complete the implementation. In the conversations I've had with a number of my constituents, it's not clear to me that that deadline is realistic. And let me be very clear, we want the safest possible passenger rail systems. My concern, which GAO has raised as well, is that, and I'm going to quote GAO right now, other critical safety needs may go unmet if funding is diverted to pay for PTC, end quote, from a GAO 2010 report on positive train control. And this is exactly what I'm concerned may be happening in my state already. For context, for instance, SEPTA owns over 300 bridges, many of which it shares with Amtrak, with an average age that exceeds 80 years. Now, due to the amount of capital that's being diverted in anticipation of implementing PTC, not a single one of those bridges moved into construction in fiscal year 2011, and none are planned to go in, in in 2012. I think there may be a sensible solution to this problem, a three-year extension to 2018, the implementation date the FRA originally requested, could free up 40 to $50 million for SEPTA alone over the next four years, allowing them to make the additional infrastructure and safety upgrades that they would like to make. Uh, I also want to mention the technical concerns about whether PTC can be implemented in time. This is a very sophisticated technology that requires a significant amount of spectrum uh, to operate real-time data transfers that indicate track movements and set speeds for, for individual trains. The FCC has issued a notice of public comment regarding the availability and affordability of that spectrum, calling the technical implementation a daunting challenge. GAO has also noted that it's uncertain if many of the PTC components will even be available in time to meet this mandate, including the software sensors and radios that are still under development. Lastly, GAO has questioned whether the rollout of a largely untested technology by 2015 is the most cost-efficient approach to implementing uh, this mandate. The FRA itself has concluded that the cost-benefit ratio of this mandate at this time is about 20 to 1. At this time of cash-strapped federal and local budgets, commuter rail systems estimate the cost of implementation to be at least $2 billion, and SEPTA estimates that its overall cost could be in the ballpark of $175 million. The FRA is mandated by law to report back on the status of the PTC implementation by 2012. The problem with that is that many rail systems, including SEPTA, need to enter into binding agreements with suppliers by the end of this year in order to meet the current deadline. Therefore, despite whatever the report might say or recommend, these PTC expenditures may very well already have to be allocated. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, I think that the PTC mandate in some ways may have painted the system with a slightly too broad a brush and not fully take into account some of the existing safety infrastructure and other items uh, like spectrum availability or the existence of the needed technology. It's my hope that we can find uh, some common ground in, in resolving this issue. I plan to introduce legislation that will that they'll address this, and there is a, sensit a sensitivity um, based on time. Um, I, I thank you for having this chairman, I, uh, I, this hearing, Mr. Chairman. I look forward to working with you. I'm afraid I will not be able to uh, stay because of another uh, obligation that I have, but uh, I appreciate your input.